Hola, bienvenidos. My name is Crisa Sotomayor. I am the programming director for the Philadelphia Latino Film Festival. We're really grateful that you're here today. Right now we are having queer coming of age conversation with Patricia Vidal Delgado and Monica Bensacur de La Leyenda Negra. Thank you so much for both being here. Thank, Thank you, you so for having us. Thank you. Um, so the film is truly such a beautiful exploration of youth and also of rebellion. Um, watching it back again, especially since everything that's happening right now, I thought that it was particularly resonant. Um, our, my first question will be, you know, how did you get started with this film? So I was first introduced to the actor Juan Reynoso, who uh, apart from being a professional actor, is also the head of TV and media production at Compton High School. And I had worked with him before in a short film. And that was also shot in Compton. And it had been a really positive experience. Uh, and then when I approached him to say that I was interested in doing a feature film, he said, you know, why don't you come and meet my students at Compton High? One day, a lot of them are interested in being both in front of and behind the camera. And so I went after class one day to, to meet with his students and I just fell in love with his kids. And a lot of them are Latino and they go through what every other American teenager goes through, but also a lot of them have immigration statuses that are currently being revoked by the current administration. So that's where the idea for La Leyenda Negra was first, uh, first born. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I forgot to mention, but if you are an audience member watching this uh, live stream, either on our uh, FLAF website or on the Facebook Live, please feel free to comment on the live stream. Um, there on the top right hand, there is a chat button that you can go ahead and press, and then there will be a live chat. So if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in there. And as well as the Facebook live stream, I'll be checking in on that as well. Um, great. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the name, La Leyenda Negra? So La Leyenda Negra, because the film explores themes of imperialism and colonialism, persecution of the other, intolerance and indifference. Um, the film also essentially asks the question, tradition or change? And for me, in terms of the colonialism, La Leyenda Negra, it refers to the demonization of Spanish conquistadores by Protestant settlers. And so it reflects a historical bias. And the character of Elitea, she challenges all bias in her fight for the truth. And also in her involvement with the underground political organization, the Compton Black Bloc. And so for me, La Leyenda Negra, it's a direct reference to colonialism, but also if you consider the English translation, it's a nod to Alipay's involvement in anarchist circles. Mm -hmm. And Monica, how did you get involved with this film? Um, well, she, well, like I said, we all went to Compton High, so when she came down to the school and, you know, I got, actually the way I got casted for the film that I got involved was by a friend that we both have in mutual, uh, Tatiana. So she said, you know what, Patricia, you know, did you meet her? I said, oh, yeah, I met her the other day. She's like, okay, she's looking for this, 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 and the character. And I think that's you. And I'm like, okay. So I gave it a try. And then she's like, okay. And then it wasn't until the day of rehearsals that she said, okay. She's like, you know, if you don't mind, I would love for you to be in my movie, but you're going to be the main character. And I'm a very shy person. So when she told me that, I was like, well, I already said yes, but I was like, can I do it? Can I not do it? I'm a very, all, we're all just used to being behind camera, not in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. There was something really new. So I was like, you know what? Why not? Let's go for it. And I think that's how, that's how I, I was like, you know what? If I'm determined to do it and we can do it, let's just do this. Wow, and it started yeah. from there. Yeah. And Patricia, in deciding to cast Monica, what, what were you looking for in Aletea? What I was looking for uh, for Aletea was someone who was kind of mature beyond their years because, you know, Aletea is a teenager, but she's she's an oddity amongst teenagers because she's very confident in her own skin and she knows exactly who she is despite mm -hmm. her youth. And so that's really what I needed was kind of a strength of character, but also uh, a maturity. 
So that's mm -hmm. what I saw in Monica. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we got a question from the Facebook live stream from Karen Rosie. Um, so the question is, I wanted to know more about the decision to make the film in black and white. So because, as I said, the, the film references, you know, cycles of history and colonialism, persecution of the other, uh, and asks that question of, you know, tradition or change, for me, the idea to film in black and white, it stemmed from uh, a well-known French idiom, which is, you know, plus ça change, but also in discussions with my DP, uh, we chose black and white as a visual metaphor for the polarity of choices that our lead character is forced to make as a potentially undocumented immigrant today in the United States. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I actually had a few questions. Why did you why did you choose to have Aletea face a TPS, temporary protected status, as um, an, a character that is from El Salvador? So at the time that I was writing the script, um, there had been an announcement that the Trump administration was actively seeking to revoke TPS um, for about a list of 10 countries, including, for example, like Haiti, um, also Nicaragua, but at least in LA, like the largest segment of TPS holders are from El Salvador. So they are certainly the largest percentage of TPS beneficiaries who will be affected by the termination of TPS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Monica, uh, being Latina, being Latinx, it's for us, immigration and being close to our motherland is so important. What does the character of Aletea and her struggle with immigration, how does that, what does that mean to you as the actress? Well, I see it all as the same because like you say, you know, us being Latinas, we're all still, we're all a community. At the end of the day, we're all in this together. And I might not come from El Salvador, but even though I'm Mexican, we're still seeing the struggles of undocumenting everywhere. Like it's just, it's not one specific race or nothing. We're all the same. We're all human beings and we're all going through the same thing. So I just, you know, I reflect on what I was going through or what I had gone through with my family. At the end of the day, when you see it, it's the same thing, you know. We, we, you know, with DACA, and with every all of those TPS, it's all for me. The way I want to see it is, we're all the same, and we're all going through this, but we're all got this. We're all together, and we're all gonna move forward from this. Yeah, and along those lines, a lot of you know riots and protests are happening throughout the country. Um, you're both based in California, right? So, could you talk a little bit about what's happening there? and how that kind of connects with the film and Aletea's rebellion um, against kind of a system. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm sorry, uh, I'll say it quickly. Um, I'm, I'm based in Venice. So, you know, the, there, were, there were riots in Santa Monica, which is kind of the closest to where I am. And it's interesting in the sense that, you know, since, you know, the 92, Rodney King riots mm -hmm. where there were crowds chanting no justice no peace and that's a chant that you hear today in again in the streets of LA and it's a quote that is actually included in the film because the the leader of the Compton Black Bloc is that's exactly exactly what he's trying to do is kind of uh, mobilize people of color against what he sees the the daily injustices of of African-American life and also the life of immigrants in which our lives are very uncertain and there isn't a lot of, there isn't any social contract really being honored by the authorities that are supposed to be there to serve and protect everyone regardless of you know nationality or creed or race. Monica, did um, you I, I agree. Yeah, I agree with Patricia, same here with me. Um, and if, you, if you've seen the film or kind of have an idea of what the film is about, it's kind of, I see it's really similar, you know, how Aletea, what she does. And like she says, at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't matter, we're all human beings. And even though we might be different skin color, we're all the same. So mm -hmm. I think it, it kind of connects with the film in, in certain ways, especially because she was a protester too as well. So I think, what's going on it's scary but you know sometimes we just have to see what it really is what the message is of, out there mm -hmm. yeah i i loved how the film opened with aletea spray painting 
her old school um, and writing the words, respeta mi existencia o espera mi resistencia. Expect my, or respect my existence or expect my resistance. And I thought that that was a beautiful message um, that actually really aligns to what's happening right now. And Aleta actually ended up uh, burning um, the school, one of the rooms in the school, which is really reminiscent of what's happening now with the protests and the rioting. Um, so I think that this is a really timely film and, and the way that it talks about um, decolonization and trying to end all of the injustices that are happening. Um, uh, I was wondering if you could speak some more about uh, the, the podcast that Arete listens to. So that was something that I wrote really is a voiceover that uh, the actor Dorian Emmanuel Young, he's, he's a rapper, but he's also an activist. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I remember that when we got in the booth to record it with him, he read the, the text and then he was like, okay, I can do these, I can do this three ways. I can do Martin Luther King, or I can do uh, Stoli Carmichael, or I can do Tupac. And so he did like the text in like three different uh, representations and like modes of delivery and for me it was I knew that he was going to put all the passion of his uh, political beliefs and his political fire into into those words and really make you believe that this is an actual you know podcast that has been penned by uh, a civil rights activist. Mm -hmm. Yeah I really loved how um, at like the how the podcast kind of served as a choir for the issues that were bubbling up in Aletea's life. Like at one point the podcast says, how many more black and brown victims will there be? When will this administration heed our call for change? And I thought that, that really resonated a lot with the character of Aletea. So could you talk a little bit about that, Monica, how you kind of, uh, your character interacted with that? Yes, because um, what I can say is Aletea is very feisty. <laughs> Uh, that's one thing that she is she's very feisty and she's in here to fight and she's here to fight for all um, especially like how it says you know that's one of her motives is when she hears stuff like that it's like yes we're in this we're fighting together you know I get my hermano and my hermanas and we're gonna do this you know for her it's like you know it's not color but I see what's happening to us of color you know being black being brown so I think that for her is a big motive of saying, I'm going to fight, but I'm not just fighting for me. I'm fighting for everybody. You know, and we're all got this together. We're all doing this because it's sad to say that reality of life. You know, so when she wants to throw her message, she's saying, you know, like, you know, we're doing everything. OK, you don't want to listen to us. So it's just more like, you know, you're pushing our buttons to go and do something else, you know, to get your attention that we're here, we exist, and we want the same respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I was also wondering, what, why did you choose the name Aletea? So Aletea, if um, it has its origins in the name for the Greek goddess of truth. And for me, it was it was relevant to to a young woman who's just very outspoken and like kind of calls it like she sees it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so could you tell me a little bit more about the production and with uh, the high school that you worked with? So we shot primarily at, uh, at Compton High School. We did do a couple of scenes at UCLA as well. Uh, but we shot for 18 days and we shot in, we shot in Compton, we shot in Downey. Um, we also did um, a few scenes by the, the Compton River uh, as well. Um, and, but it was, I mean, it was primarily South Central uh, mm -hmm. is where we shot. And it was, it was hard to secure Compton High School. I think we only really got the permission to shoot there like a day before we started filming and my producers had to work very hard to secure that permission um, and then but I'm very glad that we it really came through because it was really very important for the film that it should be at that location and also the fact that I believe that Compton High is going to be demolished 
uh, sometime in the near future. So those buildings will actually cease to exist. So the film will be the only testament to those uh, original structures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, I think film has such a powerful, um, it's such a powerful medium for documenting movements and expressions and, you know, the things that sometimes can go unseen or unheard of by the news. And I, I really applaud your, your filmmaking. Um, so what is it like, you know, being like, this is your first feature film, you know, and the film first premiered at Sundance. Um, could you talk a little bit about that experience, about making your first film? Um, I'm sure there's a lot of filmmakers watching right now wondering, you know, how do I get started and, you know, would love any advice. I would say for like first time um, filmmakers, and I guess this is advice that can apply to either a feature or a short. I mean, obviously, you know, Every time filmmaker, obviously, there's always going to be a lack of funding, but I think that you can use that to your advantage because with with less funding, or at least if you don't have like, you know, a big studio kind of pressuring you, you can make the film that you want to make, which is actually really liberating. So you can look at the money that you have and you can get depressed about it and you can be like, this isn't going to be enough. Like, I can't make a good film with this. Or you can think... It might be little, but at least I still have the freedom of making what I want to make. And I think that that's very important um, for a first time filmmaker, because I mean, I can say that I made the film that I wanted to make. And then I got, you know, we got really lucky. We were the little film that could and we somehow got into Sundance and it was a wonderful experience. And Monica can also tell you how much of a good experience it was. Yeah, Monica, do you want to add about your experience also being a first time actress? Uh, yes, I was very excited. Um, still very nervous because uh, I had to do my first interview, I remember. And I was telling Patricia, I'm like, the whole night, I was like, I don't know if I can do this. Are you sure? Do you want me there? But um and all I think I did pretty okay. <laughs> um, I was I'm very proud. I'm very proud of the film, Patricia, of what she could have, what she did with the film. And for me, I feel like that was a big step. That you know, I've never been to Sundance, and we made it right. Um, especially as a kid from Compton to say, "Wow, you know, we're going to Sundance." I think that's something really big for us, and that's a big opportunity for us, especially being Latinos. And, you know, saying, at least I did something, you know, if I, if I don't go, which I'm pretty sure we're, we're hoping that we go higher and keep, keep doing good stuff like this. But um, this, it was a very proud moment, not just for me, but I want to say for my family as well, especially, you know, like us Latinas, hi, mija, you did it. <laughs> so I got a lot of love and support from my family and I'm very thankful for that as well. So I think this experience, we learned about a lot of things. I learned how to open up more not just to like people but like being in front of the camera and being less shy you know it was something more different than when we were recording because I was already a little bit used to it it was nothing but friends but once you're in front of it for interviews it's something different so it's more scary I want to say for me it was but with the help of Patricia and everybody there I think I did a good job yeah you were great at Sundance um you were really wonderful um, we have a question from Facebook Live from Marangeli Mejia Rabel, actually the festival director. Um, what would you like for audiences to take away from watching the film? So what I would like audiences to take away is that these, you know, children often tend to identify as American as soon as they migrate to the country. And it's only later on in life when they hear the othering rhetoric surrounding immigrants that they realize that they are completely excluded from society. Uh, and what they then experience is a gradual unraveling of sense of self. And this is something that has been, you know, well documented by sociologists and immigration lawyers is that a lot of these uh, undocumented kids or potentially undocumented kids, they then self-harm, um, they self-abuse, they, they commit suicide in some cases. And what I hope is that people will come and, and watch the film. And especially if they've never even heard about TPS or even you know, know that this is an issue for, for, some, for some people in this country, 
that they don't they don't deserve this um, and it's not really right that they should be made to suffer in this way and perhaps this will encourage them to you know vote differently and instigate positive change mm -hmm. yeah so why did you uh decide to make aletea queer within the film for me that was part of you know the whole aletea being being someone who was very sure of of who she was uh, and being someone who was, you know, knew her mind and knew her heart. And also it made sense that within that paradigm that she should also be very sure of her sexuality. Uh, and she and she knows who she who she's attracted to and she's attracted to Rosarito and Rosarito is really the one that kind of has to catch up to to her, you know, burgeoning uh, mm -hmm. attraction to Aletea too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so where can people watch The Leyenda Negra? And where can we follow you? So we have a Facebook page, uh, which is La Leyenda Negra feature film, which I regularly uh, update on a weekly basis. And we should have an LA premiere sometime soon, but obviously it's been delayed because of the of the COVID situation. So all I can really say is, you know, watch, watch the space and please um, like and subscribe to our Facebook page. And Monica, where can people follow you as a young up and coming actress? <laughs> um, I'm on social media. I'm on Facebook as a Monica Bettingcourt, but with the K. Um, I have Instagram as well at Monica Bettingcourt, you know, uh, 1999 as well. Um, I'm free. They can follow me if you guys would like. <laughs> I'm also following La Leyenda Negra, so it's, it's easier to reach me. I'm always tagged in there as well. If you guys like and subscribe to us. Yeah, thank you so much for this wonderful conversation. It was definitely, your film is so timely and important. And honestly, during this time period, it is even more important. Um, it really resonates with all of the issues that are happening and um, everything that has kind of been amplified by COVID-19 is really, really resonant within your film. So thank you so much for making such an incredible work. Um, I truly appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you thank all you for, for having us. Thank, thank you, Cristal. Gracias. Gracias. Gracias.